Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome back to Love, Sex and Magic with me, your host, Mel Wells. And today's episode is the breathwork episode. If you have been fascinated by breathwork, you want to learn more, this is the episode for you because Lucas Mack and Hella Weston are really the king and queen of breathwork in my life. They are inside the membership, the Goddess Collective community. They work inside of my mastermind, the Queendom, and they're really trusted friends of mine. They are on a mission to empower people to play full out in life. When each of them discovered breathwork, they were totally blown away by the power of breath to create such massive shifts and unlock new possibilities in their lives. They believe that a huge part of you reaching your full potential is doing deep inner work to clear out the limiting beliefs, suppressed emotions, and energetic blockages that get in the way of you fully expressing yourself and experiencing well-being in mind, body, and soul. This is why they birthed Awaken Breathwork to the world for more people to benefit from this transformational tool. So in this episode, we dive into breathwork. What are some of the results and transformational experiences and breakthroughs that people can have through the power of breathwork? If you are brand new to breathwork, where do you begin? What are some of the challenges that Lucas and Hella have both overcome in their life, in their relationship, in order to be the leaders that they are today? And they are also in a 14 year old partnership and it's so impressive and so inspiring so we get a lot into relationships as well and I also share a lot of my own personal experiences around breath work so let's get into the episode Hella and Lucas thank you so much for being here welcome to love sex and magic we're so excited to be here. Let's go. go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with you guys. You are such cher- cherished and special friends of mine. And Hella, you've also been a part of my mastermind mm-hmm. for the last almost a year. You've been doing breath work for all of my amazing clients in there. And through working with mm-hmm. both of you and the many times that I have, I have experienced so many profound shifts so mm. I just want to say thank you both for your friendship and for your work. Mm. It really you. means a lot. <laughs> it's effortless. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome, homie. It's a pleasure to be here. We're excited for this conversation. So, mm. yeah. Me too. Yeah. Me too. So I know that you guys go way back. You met when you were just 16, mm. Hella. Yeah. What I want to know is when did breath work come into both of your lives? Was it something that you discovered together in your relationship? Hmm. You want to share this? Well, I could guess we go back even further before that because what led us to find breath work was Haller and I grew up in Auckland in New Zealand and we both came from kind of a lot of dysfunction and a lot of trauma growing up. So when I met Hella, she was 16. She had a fake ID and a nightclub. And I was in there with all my friends. And she was in there with all her friends. And we met and we just started hanging out. Mm -hmm. And through hanging out, we started to talk about the things that I personally couldn't talk about with my friends just because they weren't open enough. And I don't think you had that opportunity to talk about what we had truly been through. And through that we validated yeah so we we created Mm -hmm. safety Mm -hmm. within a friendship first and foremost and And you were only 16 at the time Mm -hmm. wow oh i was 16 he was 16 so he was it was he was a little bit of a creep (laughs) lucas was 24 okay Mm -hmm. okay yeah so but it was friendship you know yeah, yeah. so it wasn't it wasn't creepy back then and okay. now the age but difference is still nothing. very young in yes. the right. scheme of right. life super young so yeah we just started hanging out and i remember it was like maybe a year of kind of or six months of hanging out and then we just something clipped for us and we shifted mm. the pace on our friendship and yeah it was so interesting because you were in an environment at home where you actually weren't safe so one day Hella said to me like, hey, there's a whole bunch of things going on at home and she had locked herself in her bedroom and she was like, I'm not sure what to do. And I was like, just leave, jump out your window, come pack up, pack up everything mm-hmm. and just come kick it with me for a little bit. Oh so she did and she kind of never went back. <gasps> and I mean, that was the so beginning. Yeah. <laughs> just jump out of your balcony. Yeah. 
run away with me. Yeah. So to come full he circle to your me, question, for real. that was the beginning of us starting our, our own journey with personal growth because as mm -hmm. we all know, romantic relationships are the deepest dive into any experience of personal growth that one person could take. 100%. You know, so yeah, it, it took us a while before we would find breath work. There was a lot mm -hmm. of growth, a lot of learning. A lot of self-help books, mm -hmm. a lot of seminars, workshops. I was already a coach by the, st by the stage that we found breathwork and the road to get there was full of challenges. Like I remember I had so much trauma and suppressed pain that I used to lash out at Lucas. I would actually hit him. Whoa. We would yell at each other. I, like it was really, really difficult. We would throw things mm -hmm. and I'm amazed that we have made it this far yeah. And gotten to the stage of harmony and peace and also having the tools that we have now. So yeah. breathwork came into the picture about, what, six, seven years ago now. And we were in Bali. And I had heard about breathwork before from one of my clients. And uh, they had said to me, oh, have you tried it? You should definitely check it out. And I was like, okay, I thought it was some sort of meditation add-on type of a thing. So I just noted it but didn't feel any sense of urgency. And I had no idea actually what it was about. So when we were in Bali, I saw a little poster, you know, up at a cafe mm -hmm. for a breathwork workshop. And I was like, this is the time I think let's go and try it. And Lucas had his response. He was like, I know how to breathe. I don't yeah, I was super this. resistant yeah, to yeah. it. I was so resistant because one, we had our meditation practice. Yeah. We'd been, Hala was already a yoga practitioner by then. We'd been studying so many different modalities over the course of 10 years where I kind of thought I knew what was up. Right. And when you hear breath work for the first time, mm. you don't necessarily think transformational uh -uh. because you're like, yeah, I know how to breathe. Exactly. Mm. It's just like something that I do every day. Like, what are we going to just sit around breathing? Yeah. Mm. Like, what difference is that going to make? Mm. You know, I think that's a lot of people's first perception is I don't need this. Mm -hmm. That was my first perception for sure. But I'm so glad that Hala made me go to that workshop because it would literally change the course of our lives, you yeah. know, wow. so it was super powerful for us. Wow. And I think we've had an agreement throughout our relationship mm. that if one of us is really adamant about something, then we just have to listen. And that mm. day I remember my intuition just kicked in and I was like, I don't know why, but this is really, really important and I need you to come with me. Mm -hmm. So let's go. Mm. You knew. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And then within about 15 minutes of the experience, I mean, I got it. I got yeah. what breathwork was really about. Yeah. And then at the end of it, we just looked at each other and we were like, what the fuck? That was <laughs> me. What just world. happened? Totally. Yeah. yeah wow. we were. And got into studying. Yeah. yeah. Pretty immediately And then we after became that. obsessed with it because we were like, that was so transformational for us. And it was beyond a belief system or dogma. And then that's, mm. we knew that that was the thing that we could take to our friends and yeah. family mm. and help them create shifts in their lives. Wow. So. It's powerful. So when someone is in a breathwork session and a breathwork ceremony and they're having all these big shifts, breakthroughs that, you know, I've seen people, they see their past lives, they are healing generational stuff, they're mm. seeing things in the future, mm. they're releasing trauma. Like, can you describe like on a physical level, what is actually happening through the breath? Like what is actually happening to make all this stuff come? Mm. Well, one of the first things that starts to happen when you do awakened breath work is you start to sh shift your brain waves. So in everyday life, we're in our analytical thinking mind, which is beta brain waves, and we start to move into alpha or theta brain waves and just go into a deeply relaxed state where we're more like open to our intuition. And then you start to access more of your limbic system, which is the part of your brain that processes memory and emotion. Mm -hmm. And your limbic system is really interesting because it's, it's non-linear. So it processes the past, the present and the future simultaneously happening now. So in a breathwork journey, you start to access all the things that you haven't given yourself permission to feel, whether that's emotions or memories from the past and things just start to come up naturally Mm -hmm. and then you get to feel your way through things so it's really just about giving yourself permission to feel because as you're breathing deeply and going into that non-ordinary state a lot can come up so we have to feel safe in that space to one feel our emotions and give ourselves permission to to go inward you know because mm -hmm. i think in everyday life we're so we can be so distracted and so busy and so focused externally that we don't necessarily give ourselves permission to look inwards so in these breathwork ceremonies i like to call them 
you get to go really deep. Mm -hmm. And you really get to look at the parts of yourselves that are driving you subconsciously. So in your daily life, as Lucas was saying with the limbic brain, you know, there can be things that we're overlaying onto the present moment. And this is where people end up having unnecessary dramas in their lives where they get triggered by things that are really, really old. And the patterns continue to show up because of, of that programming, that emotion that's stuck, that's waiting to be released. And so Mm. when we go into it, you get to relate to your life in a whole new way because Mm. no longer is the old stuff overlaying over the Mm. prison. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes in breath work, what I find is stuff comes up that you can't really make logical sense out of, Mm. you know, kind of like when you have a dream and then Mm. you're like trying to analyze it and like, what does this mean? Sometimes in my experience, it's not necessarily like a full breakthrough, Mm -hmm. but there's like images and kind of fragments Mm. of things that then might make sense later on Mm. down the line. Yeah. Do you you see that a lot in people? Yeah. Yeah, And definitely something that we encourage people to do when they're in the sessions is not get too analytical about it. Right. Because sometimes that takes away from what's trying to happen and what's organically processing and releasing through. It's like one of my Mm. mentors once said, if you were going to let go of a piece of furniture, you wouldn't wait until you know who made it, where it came from, um, what all the materials were to just let it go. You Mm. would just go, okay, I no longer need this and I'm going to release it from my life. But with our emotional baggage, often I think we go way too deep into the meaning and analysis. And Mm. yeah, Yeah. sometimes the body is just like, hey, you know what? You don't need to know. Just let it Mm. go. And the question comes up for a lot of people around childhood memories that are blocked. So, for example, maybe there's been abuse or there's been some sort of trauma where the memory is no longer accessible And you don't necessarily need to remember what happened to you to heal. Yeah, well, it's a somatic therapy. So it's moving beyond just talking about it and letting the body process it, letting the body clear and release it, you know, which is really, really powerful. For me, it's been one of the most powerful things in my life to get beyond talking about it Mm. and just get into feeling and processing and moving it so Mm. deep. Beautiful. I think, you know, it's just, again, that whole thing of we're so used to analyzing and intellectually knowing every single detail about something that when something happens like this, it's a mystical experience for people Mm. that are not used to having those kind of experiences. So we want to just make sense of it Mm -hmm. in the, in the logical mind. We want to go, well, why is this? Where does it come from? Exactly. I need to know, Mm -hmm. but you really don't need to. Mm. Um, I really like the shared that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, And sometimes you will. Mm. And yeah. cool. If you do, then that's fun and mm. it's mm. super interesting and insightful. And I feel like <laughs> most of our clients do have experiences that piece together to make a lot of sense and mm. a lot of clarity comes through as a result of that. But yeah, it's mm. not necessary. Yeah, yeah. I've had clients that have just breathed continuously for one hour in these sessions and they haven't had any emotional releases and they haven't pieced anything together. And then two weeks later, they're off antidepressants and they're feeling like the best that they've ever felt. So you never know what's happening in the subconscious and the Mm. unconscious and all the rewiring that's happening in the body, you Mm. know? So beautiful. Mm. And it's really nice as well to see a lot of clients who come to us, they're drawn to psychedelics or they're maybe preparing for a psychedelic experience, but they're not Mm. quite ready to go there. Or Mm -hmm. maybe they've done the psychedelic work and they're looking to integrate it at a deeper level. And this is a really great complementary tool. No matter what order you put it in, it Mm. all goes super well together and um, helps you to understand yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And I also want to share with anyone listening that thinks that breath work is like the, the, on like the lead up to psychedelics or like the warm up to psychedelics. I've had breathwork ser- sessions that are, have been so much more powerful than plenty of my ayahuasca journeys, yeah. mm. you know? So you don't necessarily need to go to the jungle, sit and drink ayahuasca for four mm. nights. You can, and this is this can be just as powerful. This could be your medicine, yeah. mm. you know, for in many ways. There's been so many incredible breathwork experiences that I've had, and... You know, I can remember one one that I had maybe a year ago. I was working with um, I was working with this like rejection wound in my relationship, and it was almost like I was feeling not chosen. I was mm. feeling rejected. I was feeling like I'm not the chosen one. Like you're choosing someone else over me. This mm. is like maybe like a year a year or two ago, mm. and um, 
I remember I did this breathwork session and I was literally transported to being a child in my, um, in my dad's, like in my dad's house in like a childhood bed that I was in Mm. and I was crying and I was just like screaming and crying. And my dad was in a room in his room with another woman Mm. and I was crying, trying to get his attention because I wanted him to come and choose me and come and sit with me and make sure that I was okay. But instead he was in a room with another woman. So it was like, I was being taken back to the the origin mm. of that wound of not feeling chosen. Mm. And I really felt like I was able to heal that because then when I've had other experiences where I've not felt chosen, it's not triggered me in the same way. I've just been like, oh, that's not my path. That's not my person. Or yeah. like, I'm not, I don't need to be, I choose me, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. it doesn't trigger the same things. And like, I've not had that kind of experience in some of my psychedelic journeys. Mm. Like that was, that was purely breath work, mm. you know? Yeah. Um, and then like recently we were on this retreat, you guys were facilitating. Mm. It was the most incredible session that you led. And I felt like my, my two ovaries were suddenly like very hot. Mm-hmm. And I could feel like my whole like pelvic region was like, burning up and getting really hot and hello you came over and you put your hands I don't know how you knew exactly where to put your hands but you just you just like placed your hands there and I was like how as soon as you put your hands there I started grieving I started crying like all of this stuff just came up and I was like just crying and like releasing so much pain and so much grief and so much trauma Mm. and it just pieced so much together because I recently had this operation where I had a cyst removed from my ovary and I had like intuitively felt that that what that was a physical manifestation of emotional trauma that had happened from my Mm. last breakup Mm. and when that happened in the breathwork session it was just like a full body confirmation of just like that that was like that was the grief that was the letting go that was the purging Mm. you know so, I mean, I just wanted to share that, like mm. how so powerful beautiful. that is. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's powerful. I think for me on a personal level, it's like what you said about transporting back into when you're a child and, yeah. and reliving and moving through all those triggers and all that pain for me on a personal level, that's been some of the greatest gifts that breathwork has offered me mm. that inner child healing. Mm. And to realize how much a moment meant to you, like mm. what you were describing yeah. with yeah. being in bed and And I didn't even dad. remember that. Yeah. I didn't even remember that memory. Yeah. It like completely showed itself to me as almost as if for the first time. Mm. Yeah, it's so powerful eh? because it's often it's not what happens to us. It's the meaning we place around it. Yeah. And then that creates the story or the narrative. Yeah. And then, and then by the time we're adults, we're full of stories about who we are, what mm. we're worthy of, mm. what's possible. Mm. Yeah. And a lot of that isn't serving us. Mm. Mm. So what I see you guys do with breathwork feels very different from other types of breathwork. And I know that you've coined this term, awaken breathwork. Mm. Can you share like what your spin on this is? Like what is your signature style of breathwork? Mm. Yeah, Yeah, well, the amazing thing about this journey that we went on before we found breathwork is Hella and I did about 10 years of studying with other different modalities. So we brought all of those modalities, all the things that we really loved about personal growth that we had experienced that really helped us. We brought that into awakened breathwork. And we still study. We're still adding. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a direct experience of transformation and healing. And we bring in, yeah, a whole range of other modalities that I think enable people to go deeper than they can. Well, first of all, there's hundreds of different breathwork techniques Mm. available out there to people. So to be clear on what we're doing, we're doing conscious connected breathwork and usually a session will last about two hours, but there'll be about an hour of connected breathing where you're lying down and you're feeling and you're going inwards. And then we go into a meditation. But before we get to that point, point we really create that safe space. There's and, a lot of preparation, yeah, which is different to other modalities. Yep. There's a lot of preparation. And I think that's one of the catalysts which enables people to go deep. When I've been in spaces and I haven't felt safe, I might get to the point where I'm I'm processing something and I might stop. Mm. The session will finish and I'll go away and process it in public, uh, private, sorry, just because I don't feel safe enough to to really allow myself to go Mm. there. So I think that's 
the number one thing that we do is we work on creating that safe space and how we do that just looks different every single time, just feeling into the room, feeling into what people need. And we never really plan anything ahead. It's all organic. And we kind of just step into that, step into that space and lead from intuition and lead from heart. Mm, Yeah. I really feel that from you guys. Like you're so good at creating such a beautiful, safe space. Mm. Yeah. You know, what's coming up for me is that recent session that we did in my mastermind, do you remember where you were, you were leading us through the session. Mm. It was all of my clients and me. I was joining for this one and I was going through this stuff in the session and you were like feeling it Mm. for me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like how, (laughs) that just like blew, blew my mind. Just like Mm. how you're able to like tune into like what people are going through. Like, how do you know where someone needs healing or like what they're processing? Like, is that something that you've like, um, you know worked on over time is that something that's just come naturally comes through in the moment Mm. yeah it's years and years of intuitive development and this is such a huge part of what we do that can't really be boxed or packaged or described exactly in terms of a method because it's it's a felt sense and it's a very present moment experience that Lucas and I and other facilitators that we work with have trained ourselves through our own experience, through our own hardships, our own inner work, Mm. years and years and years and hours of really learning how to feel and listen for the unspoken subtleties. And so when we're in these breathwork sessions, before the breathwork has even begun, Mm. we're in it. Like we're in the process of feeling and picking up on the subtle energies Mm. that are wanting to emerge in the session. So for example, with you, with that session in particular, it was really interesting because I remember we'd had it scheduled and I had a power cut Mm -hmm. and I was in the middle of nowhere in this remote stormy location in New Zealand in the bush. And so we weren't able to do the session and I didn't have contact and was super stressed out about it. I'm like, oh no, this is bad. And then fast forward to the time when we were actually able to get everyone together to do the session. I was feeling, I I was feeling almost like I was a parent that had let you down or a partner that had let you down. Mm. And all of this stuff was coming up. And what I've learned by holding space for others is that when I am an open channel, when I am just really, you know, cleaned out, clear slate, open mind to what wants to happen, Mm. when I have a charged emotion or thought process arising, typically I know it's not mine. Mm. because I am there to just be neutral to what Mm. wants to occur. And so when I had all this guilt coming up Mm. leading up to that session and in the session itself, firstly, I could rationalize and say, oh, well, you know, I missed the first one. So obviously that would be why, but it was more than that. Mm. It was an irrational flooding of feelings and this is where it gets even more kind of trippy and multidimensional is when you start to realize that the session starts to mirror, it becomes a microcosm of the client's life patterns Mm. Mm. and themes that are wanting to be processed. Mm. So as we entered into that experience, I'm like, why do I feel like I am the partner or the parent that has failed Mel? And in my heart, I know there's so much love here and my intentions are good. And yet it doesn't feel like she feels that. Mm. And so I knew because I've done enough work now to know that this is an opportunity for healing. Mm -hmm. I knew to voice that to you. Yeah. Yeah. And it was reflected in the experience that you had. And, but Mm. we hadn't had any conversation around it. There hadn't been any like, and I wasn't coming to the session thinking like feeling let down by you. Mm. I was just coming to the session to come to the session because Mm. This is the this is what we provide for my mastermind, the Queendom. And yeah. I was like, oh well, I'm gonna join this one because I mm. feel like I need some breath work today. Mm-hmm. You know, I think it's it's so important for healers and coaches to be doing their own inner work, especially when they're holding to containers for others. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. But yeah, in that session I was processing feeling let down, feeling abandoned, and all of this was was coming up. And it hadn't really like clicked that it was to do with a parent. But when, Mm. when we started processing afterwards, 
you were like, I had this thing come through mm. around your dad. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was, it was just, wow. Mm. Yeah. And I also had like a really big vision come through for my membership community at the same time, like a manifestation, mm. you know? So sometimes it's things like that that come through. It's not just mm. healing old patterns and it's like, oh, it clears the space almost for like yeah. something new, some new vision to come through. Yeah. Exactly. Most exactly. definitely. Hella and I now do our business meetings using breath work because it's not just about letting go. Like you said, it's also yeah. about calling in. And when you can kind of access that non-ordinary state, you have access to more information that you do outside of daily life. So you can really pull from a lot of threads mm. and yeah, start making sense on a larger scale and really understand the work that you're here to do and how you want to, you know, lead. And it's so powerful to do that. Yeah, it's yeah. every time that we do breathwork ceremonies, I receive so much inner guidance and it's mm. one of my favorite things to do. You know, I love that aspect of it because you feel held, you feel supported, you feel connected and you feel like you're tapping into your higher self and it's a direct experience mm. of that. And it's not anyone telling you, you know, anything. It's really you tuning into that. So mm. that's why I love it. This is something I've been thinking about a lot lately. It's actually, it's really started coming up at the retreat that we were at what is beyond healing? You know, mm. I think so many people in the personal development space, whether they're just purely participants or have gotten into being a service provider of some kind, I think healing can become kind of addictive mm -hmm. and an, an mm. identity in a way where we're like, oh, there's so many things that I want to fix or improve about myself. But mm. Once we get to a, a place of clearing, right, which is the point of the work, isn't it? To get to that place where we're like, ah, oh, okay, feeling empowered. I feel like I've let go of enough of my shit that I can create now. Mm. And what I see a lot is that some people don't know what to do when that space is opened. Mm. I mean, we've even seen it countless times with breathwork sessions where someone will let go of something so deep, so huge that has been driving their lives and when it's gone there's this sort of panic that happens because there's this neural wiring right. that says there's things that I need to fix I'm broken right. this is my identity and so we actually need to rewire our brains to seek possibilities and opportunities and to be in more of a creative state rather mm. than that fixing and problem solving so mm. once we get through that level of the work it's so exciting to see yeah. what we can create and the ideas yeah. that can come through like we can be busy with our creativity we don't need mm -hmm. to preoccupy ourselves with yeah. drama and yeah. we don't need to be fully healed yeah. in yes. order to be a healer mm -hmm. and in order yeah. to start helping others yeah. you know i really i really relate to that and i've just been continuously growing and healing at the same time as serving my medicine to the mm. world it's just been like of course we do this and of course mm. we're healing at the same time and the deeper that we heal the bigger we can grow and the more we can manifest yeah but um what you were saying about like this addiction of like am i fixed yet mm. there's so much to heal mm. it's almost like we we need to stop just constantly looking for things to heal but also you know there's like that that meme it makes me laugh so much but it's like when you realize when you when you realize that your entire personality is a trauma response mm. right yes mm. so funny mm. but there are things that i look back at my childhood and i'm like if i like once i've healed if i've healed that and i've found resolution around it then i like oh who am i then mm -hmm. like what does this mean about me mm. if i'm not who all these things that i thought i was who am I? Like, who is that new identity? And that's why there's just so much death and rebirth mm -hmm. that happens along this path that we can't get too attached to one version of ourselves or yeah. one identity. Exactly. Mm. Like, who do I want to be? Mm. Yeah. How do I want to create yeah. my life next? Mm. We, I feel like we really find a lot of joy in that being creative and Mm. being like okay well who's the character that I want to be in this lifetime and mm. how do I want to dress mm. and yes. where do I want to be and who do I want to hang with mm. and making life like art yes yeah. 
Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do is to help people expand into their creativity or of what's possible for them because I feel like a lot of people have these dreams or desires or vision for their life, but for whatever reason, they're not giving themselves permission to go after it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is, you know, the trauma response or not feeling good enough or not feeling worthy of creating your dreams into reality. So Mm -hmm. that's another really powerful component of breathwork is manifestation and calling things in and seeing it as already done and experiencing that through visions and feeling in these breathwork sessions Mm. and then going out there and taking action and making it real and that's something that you do so well is you just are a straight boss (laughs) and you're just constantly taking action and making things real which is something I really respect and admire about you thank you I really appreciate that Mm. I love you guys we love you Mm. (laughs) it's inspiring to witness thank Mm. you and same for you like I love seeing you guys traveling all over the world working with the most dope ass people like it makes me so happy i'm like go on go mm. on like yeah mm. i love cheerleading for you guys it's the it's the greatest pleasure it is fun yeah. and mm. then you're really living the game of life right mm. yeah. being mind blown by your own creations and oh mm. yeah what your intuition can bring through for you mm. yeah and it's it's something that we see in you and as we've just touched on admire so much is that when you receive the guidance, you act upon it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is that missing piece that a lot of people just keep swirling and stirring Mm. in the addiction to, I I need more, I need more, I need like more clarity, more answers, more healing. Mm -hmm. Well, what if you just started acting on what was here for you right now? How might that support the shift? Mm. It's about self-trust, I think, isn't it? you know trusting yourself and having the confident in your confidence in yourself to actualize the, these visions that come through mm-hmm. yeah and instead of going like who am i to do this i can't do that you go well who else would do it of course it's me you yeah. know yeah. like you yeah. are the chosen one i am the chosen yeah. one exactly and something that you said to me in the in the living room earlier before we started recording was um of course it would be you there's no one else that could do this except you and mm. i I try to always think like that when I have a vision coming through is like, well, it came to me for a reason. Yeah. So who else is going to do it? Yeah. It's got to be me. Yeah. That's right? so important. Oh, love and, it. and also yeah. remember that not everyone's going to understand your vision because it's your vision. So you're the one that has to take action on it. And mm. maybe talking about it to friends or family that aren't open to hearing or receiving your vision is not the best use of your time when you could just be taking action because there's so many people that are looping in the same old behaviors and really not challenging themselves to step out of the comfort zone through fear of judgment, through Mm -hmm. fear of failing. And sometimes it's our family members that, you know, put their own projections onto our vision. And I've seen that time and time again in our own lives and then all our clients' lives too, where you have to have that confidence and that fierce, courageous, you know, passion to really, you know, boss up and go after what you want, despite what other people might think or what other people might say, because there's always going to be people out there that are going to judge you. It's just a part of, you know, the human condition and the human experience. So you have to bypass all of that. And like you said, use those positive affirmations, those I am statements, and then really go after it. Mm. I hope that you are loving this episode so far. I'm just going to take a little pause and tell you about our sponsor for today. And that is a health coaching certification that really changed the course of my life, IIN. So when I signed up for IIN to become a health coach in 2013, I did not know that that would have changed the course of my life forever. And since then, as you know, I've gone on to work with so many different women through my coaching courses, memberships. I've written two books with a third on the way, hosted over 30 retreats around the world, spoken on epic stages like TEDx and Google, and have been featured in Forbes, Cosmo, Vogue, and so many more. I had no idea that any of this was coming, but my entire personal and professional journey has evolved exponentially along with my business. So much more than I could have ever imagined when I first signed up to work with IIM. This was a game-changing decision for me. You know, investing in a school that had integrity, a school that had a reputation that could not only set me up for success, but really equip me with the essential tools and knowledge that I needed to set up 
up a coaching business from the ground up. You know, I really started with zero um, and it's really helped me create this authentic, embodied and empowering approach to my business that has followed along the eight years that I've now been in this industry. So I want to say a huge thank you to the Institute of Integrative Nutrition, IIN, and IIN is our sponsor for today. So I'm a proud partner now with IIN because it truly is the most transformational, comprehensive, and credible holistic health education available. It's fully online. It teaches nutrition and nutritional science, coaching mythologies, life coaching skills, business and marketing skills, and personal development tools. So it's not just about nutrition. I really want you guys to know that. They created the field of health coaching nearly 30 years ago, and they've become the world's most renowned online health coaching and nutrition school with over 110,000 students and graduates in 175 countries. I always recommend people to go to IIN because they really set their graduates up for success. You know, whether they want to start their own health coaching practice, become a wellness entrepreneur, or simply transform how they feel. For me, when I first started working with clients, I was terrified. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Uh, But when I started IIN, it was really part of the process of like helping us know what to do, helping us know how to get clients, how to work with clients. It really supported me in establishing my own unique magic, my own authentic message that would set my coaching and my business apart from everyone else. And, you know, the same for everyone else who worked through that certification alongside me. You're going to learn at IIN that achieving optimal health is not just about the food on your plate. It's about how you nourish yourself in your life through your relationships, your spirituality, your career, your environment, and much more of what they call primary foods. So regardless of the path that you choose, the personal transformation that IIN students and graduates experience is profound and they really do continue to spread just such a massive ripple of health and happiness around the world. Now is a better time than ever to answer the call and become a coach, especially because as a proud partner of IIN, I'm offering an exclusive discount to my Love, Sex and Magic listeners, which can score you $2,050 that's $2050 off your tuition. Not just that, but you're also going to receive some juicy business coaching from me when you enroll with my unique link. So if you want to learn how to build impact and change lives with the world's leading health coach certification school, get started today by heading to the link in the show notes. Make sure that when you speak to them on the phone, you say my name and you will get all of these juicy bonuses. So head to the link in the show notes with all the details on how to get that special discount off your tuition. I want to go back to your relationship, Mm. if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because you guys have been together for 14 years, which Mm. for our age and our generation is pretty rare. Mm. You know, the fact that you guys were together since you since you were very young Mm -hmm. but the amount of growth and evolution that Mm -hmm. you guys have been through the amount of death and rebirth Mm -hmm. that you must have gone through can you share like some of the different ways uh that breathwork has like played a role in these constant deaths and rebirths of your Mm -hmm. relationship because you guys are so strong and i know that relationships are so multifaceted and so Mm. layered Mm. and textured but can you share like just the role that breathwork has played in overcoming some of your challenges along the way Mm. well i think for me on a personal level Mm. i think hella you've brought out a lot of drawing me out i could be like i could close my heart and i was pretty locked yeah and (laughs) not and not communicate and really go aloof and I think internalized about the first four years of our relationship i had never seen him cry and i used to ask him mm. do you even feel mm. oh, ouch <laughs> like do you even feel anything about this mm. wow yeah it was difficult wow. to get through but like mm. chip 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 and, and breath work was massive well, yeah and for me wow. i'm an empath so i feel so deeply mm. but then allowing myself to actually feel it and process it and talk about it yeah, has been express. my biggest journey expressing it and i think the key to relationships what i found is not only you know expressing your truth of how you 
you know, if you feel about things, but being able to be vulnerable in it and, and show your emotions and breath work has really helped me with that crack open and feel all my emotions, which wasn't an easy mm. journey because for so long I suppressed my emotions and I pushed them down. Mm. And I think a lot of men do that, Absolutely. you know? Yeah. And if I feel like that is a, such a common frustration for women being with someone where they feel that it's lacking emotional depth and connection and not knowing how to break through. And I love seeing all the men that are drawn to breath work because mm. it is, yes. it's not fluffy. Mm. It's not like you've got to go in and talk about your feelings. It's an internal process. It's a physical practice mm. and it will just crack you open to truth, mm. to be with what's really there. Mm. And we've seen men that haven't cried for 15, 20, 30 years mm. break down fetal position and just unlock. Mm. And then we've been able to hear how that's impacted their relationship. So for me, being in a relationship with him and having him open up like that was the biggest relief. Mm. It felt like, oh, mm. okay, it was worth it. It was mm. worth it to mm. keep holding the space and this is where it gets interesting right because these are all these childhood patterns that yeah. we you know we place upon our relationships so for me my father committed suicide when i was really young and i was an only child and i didn't want to burden my mum mm -hmm. with anything that i was feeling or going through so i internalized everything and shut off my emotions so i could be there for my mum and i could be strong for her so when it comes to relationships I'll do the same thing. I'd internalize everything. I'd be strong. I wouldn't talk about it. So Hella really had to draw that out of me. And then along with the breath work, that was just full crack open and permission to share, permission to be vulnerable, permission to speak about it, which is ultimately the most freeing thing. And I think it's something that all men deeply desire down, but they don't have the tools or the understanding or they don't feel safe enough to do so. So, mm. yeah. And then for me, one of the patterns that showed up in my childhood and then in the relationship was healed was when I was growing up, I felt like my truth didn't really have a place to be expressed. And there was a lot of dysfunction going on and I would try to express myself and say, hey, this is not okay. Or why is it happening like this? Why are you doing these things? And just wanting to understand so that I could feel safe. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really ever get that. There was a lot of, you're a child, you don't understand, these are adult things, and this is not for you to know, and we're not going to talk about it. And so by the time we got together, I didn't even realize how traumatized I was. And so he gave me the space and listened and was like, that's actually really fucked up that that happened to you. And year by year by year, as I've learned more about trauma and how it's stored in the body and how it drives us through the subconscious mind. I've been able to validate myself, validate that inner child mm. who was so wounded and felt so alone with all of this pain and not even knowing if it was real, mm. if my perception of reality was trustworthy and who I could go and express myself to and be supported by. So Lucas really held that space. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, I, it was ugly. It was really ugly in the process of that healing. Mm. I remember times when we'd be driving and I would hit him while he was driving and be like, let me out of the car. I don't want to be around you. I don't want to be near you. And this was him probing my trauma and saying like, hey, this is stuff that you need to look at. And mm. I just was so defensive and in denial that I would push him away. And then he would stay and he'd be steady and say, I'm not going anywhere. Mm. I want to work through this. I want to, I want to help you. I'm not here to hurt you. I'm here to help you. And that was a gradual rewiring for me. Mm. And then when the breath work really came into the picture and helped unlock even deeper, like things that I didn't know needed to be unlocked. One of them was anger, the mm. sacred rage that yeah. I needed to feel. This has come up a few times on this show recently, yeah. actually, because women have been taught that, well, men have been taught that they cannot feel, they cannot cry, they cannot get sad. Mm -hmm. Women have been taught that they cannot show their anger. Mm -hmm. Exactly. They cannot be aggressive. Mm -hmm. And so it, it gets pushed down and then just comes out mm -hmm. when, it, when it wants to come out, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And because I had a relationship, you know, we often take out the pain that we feel deep inside on the ones who are closest to us. And so Lucas was that person for me where I actually started to let the anger out and we didn't know what we were doing. We Mm. didn't know how to hold space for that in the beginning, but we've learned Mm. and I needed to feel a lot of anger and I use the breath work as a practice place for that, like a safe Jedi school Mm. to give myself full permission to be whatever I need to be in one Mm. moment to the next. It's, it's a space and a practice where I let myself express and um, explore what that feels like and what it means and where I want to go with that in my daily life. So Mm. things like getting cushions and being able to breathe and be with the full fiery energy that I felt inside that Mm. had never had a place to go and punching the cushions and yelling things and letting it get kind of ugly in a way that was very harmless. You know, when you create a sit and setting for yourself where you're like, you know what? I can be a bitch. I can be crazy. I can be unreasonable. And there is just love here. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. it goes, it transmutes. Yeah. And then you feel so much lighter. So yeah. that's been huge. Mm. And then it's led to after the rage got expressed came, ah, oh, I have a voice. Mm. Mm. I have creativity. Mm. I have ideas. I'm a woman and I matter and I can be powerful beside him, not submissive mm-hmm. mm. and like a second grade citizen. And mm. yeah, that's mm. been huge, I think, for us. Yeah, there's been years and years and years of like letting go. But there's also been years of calling things in and co-creating together, which is, I think, is another powerful, you know, element to this work. And then when you sprinkle, just looking at the sign, when you sprinkle this work into having sex as well and consciously using your breath and syncing and energizing and manifesting through that way, then that's when things get really juicy and interesting and you really start to co-create together. Let's hear more about that and speak more on that. That sounds exciting and juicy. Yeah. Well, a really simple thing that anyone can practice at home is being aware of your breath Mm -hmm. and whether you're connecting with a lover or with yourself, being aware of your breath Mm -hmm. and starting to explore different ways of breathing can get you more connected to your body. Mm -hmm. And I think especially for women, a, a a huge, huge turn on for us is feeling present and connected and getting out of here Mm -hmm. and really into here, like Mm. into the body, into the sensations and feeling Mm. safe to do that and safe to express. Mm. So, um, a simple practice that people can do is our awaken daily practice, which we share online for free. And that five minutes of deep breathing can be, a doorway into meditation. It could be a doorway into self-pleasure. It could be a doorway into Mm -hmm. sex. A lot of our clients use it before they connect or Mm -hmm. even during sex. It's like go into some breath work. Mm. Well, your breath can be used as like an accelerator or you can slow down. So for men that are wanting to last longer, you know, it's all about slowing down, accessing more of your parasympathetic nervous system so you can actually be totally present and not just want to, you know, blow your load. Yeah. It's like mm. slowing completely down. And then if you, for a woman, if you want to accelerate things, you know, it's like putting your foot on the gas pedal a little bit and it's like yeah. speeding up. But, you know, that's the cool thing about your breath. You get to decide and you get to use it based on what you, how you're feeling in the moment mm-hmm. and, and what you want to do. And it's just about having fun with it and getting creative and playing, you know, and syncing up. And I think that's a beautiful thing to do. Yeah, it's so so much fun. Yeah, and a simple practice that we just do is breathing together. We do a lot of the uh, mouth breathing, and I'll just clarify because there's going to be people who will wonder about this. We don't recommend breathing in and out through your mouth in everyday life. You should be breathing in and out through your nose. But if you're wanting to stimulate yourself, if you want to really get activated – the mouth breathing can be used to activate the sympathetic nervous system and increase arousal. Mm. So you can do it if you're having a creative work day. Yeah. You can do Mm. it with sex. When you go into that mouth breathing and you do it together, it can really Mm. create a lot of connection and increase arousal. Like I said, Mm. yeah. Yeah, so play around with it, fam. Yeah, <laughs> juice. And then if you want to go into that sex magic, you know, you just yeah. add, in, add in there some visualization. Mm. 
your goals and mm. it's, it's beautiful <laughs> it's spicy i like this <laughs> okay well this leads me nicely on to my next my next set of questions mm. so i always ask my guests these three questions mm. what is one thing that you guys are loving right now let's do separately mm. something that you're loving mm. oh okay shall i go first yeah um something that i'm loving is surrendering to the flow of life's plan. Lucas and I have been traveling for a really long time now, years and years on the road. I mean, we should be platinum members of Airbnb <laughs> <laughs> and we fight it a lot when we're wanting to have a base. We'll be like, why do we keep getting called to travel? We just want to have stability. We just want to have a base. But then as soon as we surrender, it becomes really, really fun and new opportunities and adventures and growth and discovery always comes with it. Mm. So I think for me, what I'm loving right now is remembering that and just continuing to surrender and be surprised by what shows up. I mean, moments like this, you know, mm. the ability to on the fly go, let's go to Miami. Fun. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And for me, I'm going to feel into this. What I feel is I'm loving letting my inner child express himself and just playing and having fun, calling him more play, calling him more expansion, really connecting with the parts of me that are co-creating this journey that we're both on, creating more wealth, creating more abundance, creating more fun, creating more freedom and um just playing along that journey because I think for so long I've taken things so seriously and you know you're just gunning to get to a certain point in your career or whatever it might be and now it's just about having fun with it mm. and through that fun I get to create you know what we're creating which is dope love that and mm. the two go so well together when you surrender you can have more fun yeah, yeah. you know when you're not attached and trying to control it mm. you can be more in play yeah beautiful mm. something that turns you on Mm. You go first. You go. <laughs> you can answer together if you want. <laughs> okay. Hmm. What turns me on is vision. Mm. Being really deeply connected to what is possible and living in total conviction with that knowing is, yeah, the most exciting turn on. Hmm. For me, what turns me on and activates me is seeing people access and materialize their dreams into reality. That's a massive turn on for me. It's a big fuck yes and really celebrating people. And that what turns me on on a physical level is seeing Hella really embodied. So Hella dancing or her expressing herself through her body. That's a big turn on for me. Mm, yep. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And what about the last time you experienced magic? Mm. Oh, I mean, today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have a practice we, how we experience magic every single day. We sit down, we do our breath work, we tune in, we have a ceremonial gray cacao, and we kind of use that to access magic every single day. Yeah. So consistently, I'd say, yeah, this morning would be our, our, um, our last time of accessing magic. Yeah, and I'll just add to that that, I feel like one of our biggest passions is to normalize magic. Mm. Yeah. And that is another bit of the secret sauce that we add in with Awakened Breathwork is giving people permission to live in the magic and to access it and to explore it and be childlike again about mm. it. You know, we mm. when we're kids, we're so free in that magic. And then as we get older, we get more serious. Mm. We get more skeptical, more controlling. Yeah. We get told that it doesn't exist. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we and, get told to not believe in our own magic. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so for us, just giving ourselves that permission every day allows us to be the embodiment of it and then to go and do things that inspire others and live by example and spread spread all the magic, the good juju, and mm. yeah, see it Powerful. ripple out. It's, it's so exciting. Powerful. I think other people's magic is as much exciting to us mm. as our own. Mm. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. And so what is the vision for Awakened Breathwork right mm. now? What is what is coming? Mm. The vision for Awakened Breathwork is to reach millions of people mm. and give them a direct experience of transformation and healing and make it accessible for everyone. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's my vision when I tap into it. It's really taking it as far and wide as we can. Yeah, yeah I agree. 
allowing our intuition to guide us every step of the way so that it can be way beyond what our minds can fathom. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And ultimately the shift in consciousness is at the forefront of our our aims. I mean, this is a great time to be having this conversation. Mm. <laughs> you know, so many people are really radically waking up right now, having huge shifts in their awareness and consciousness. Mm. And I feel like breathwork is such an incredible, accessible way for people to start diving deeper. You know, my family have been recently awakening and have mm. doing their own work and their own healing. And it's just been so incredibly powerful to witness. And I just know that breathwork is going to be the next thing that I start to introduce to them. And mm. I'm really excited about it. I'm so excited to meet them and share some. Yes. Let's go. We'll get them on the podcast soon, hopefully. Yeah. Well, you two are just incredible, awesome, beautiful humans. I know I've said it a million times, but I really love you guys so much. Mm. So please share with everyone where they can come dive into your world a little bit more, experience more of your magic, mm. work with you, hire you. Where can they come get more of, get more of you? Mm. Our website is awaken with an O, O-W-A-K-E-N. So awaken.com is an easy place to find us. Mm. Or awaken breathwork on Instagram. You mm -hmm. can find us there too. And, and from there you'll find our personal yeah. Deets, our uh, profiles, yep. all of that mm -hmm. good stuff. Yep. Beautiful. Well, thank we're you gonna, for having us. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to head into the membership next for some mm. personal questions from our community. Cool. But cool. for everyone else, thank you. It's been a, such a pleasure to have you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Mal. Much love, fam. Yeah, much love. Mm. Okay, loves, I hope you loved that episode. If you did, please do share it, put it up on your stories, tag me, let me know that you are tuning in and what you took away from this episode. And please do leave us a review. It really means the world to me. I love reading your reviews. If you love this podcast, please share it with your friends. And until next week, I hope that your life is filled with love, sex, and magic. <laughs>